Okay, so we're going to try and see if this uh, Maxi app 2000 or 200 will read the codes from this. Oh, I already read the VIN. <coughs> and see if it'll scan. This is a 5.3. See if it'll scan the. Uh, Trailer brake control module. I don't believe it has a front front view camera module. Should ask me about the transfer case. It's going to ask me if this is a trans single speed switch activated. No. It's four high, four low. Two speed manual shift. Two speed switch activated. That's one. Diagnosis. Auto scan. Let's see what it comes up with. Engine. Tranny. Chronic brake control. Chassis control, that's the one. Well, isn't that special? My snap on scan tool and my OTC scan tool would not communicate with the chassis control module, but this one does. I haven't even turned on my snap on Varus Edge. Let's turn it on and get it boot it up while this thing's scanning. It's pretty sad when a $150 Bluetooth code reader that works with your smartphone works in place of a $12,000 Varus and a $4,000 MaxiSys Elite. Eighteen modules. Okay. Let's read the code in the communication or ch chassis control module. Trouble codes. Trailer brake control solenoid valve control circuit. Well, I didn't have that before. So I'm suspecting there's still water in that connector because I got news last night that the customer actually used a pressure washer to clean it out. Which uh, doesn't actually work, forcing more water in there. Water is still electrically conductive, albeit a little less conductive than salt water. That might be the problem. Okay, we're going to escape. Let's see what kind of live data we can get out of that module. Trailer brake control output circuit short to ground. Well, that could be in that connector. Well, we're going to raise this up and have a look at that. Let's save this as a PDF. Okay, I'm going to try the snap-on scanner again. So I've rebooted re uh, the uh, snap-on scanner. And I'm going to go into the chassis control module, the trailer brake control, display codes, no communication. Now that's what led me to spending 
an hour yesterday checking wiring in and out of that trailer brake control module. Yet as you can see, my little Autel Maxi AP200 adapter and this little guy worked just fine. But the Autel scanner didn't work yesterday either. So this is really pissing me off. Let's try this Maxisys Elite again. Oh, I gotta change vehicles. Okay, so it's GM. I don't know why I was thinking it was a Dodge. I just drove a Dodge out. Read the VIN. Okay. Yes. Diagnosis. Control unit. Chassis control module. Trailer brake control module. See, that's what I got yesterday. So when I have basically $15,000 worth of scan tools that tell me that there's no communication with the computer, I'm going to start checking powers and grounds of that computer. Who would think to bring out another $150 code reader and see if that works? So I've lowered the spare tire again, and I'm going to take this connector apart at the back. I did not take it apart yesterday, which I should have. Uh, I just simply blew it out from the face, but I didn't realize at that time that the customer had pressure washed it. There was water in there, but it didn't look that bad. Well, let's have a look. Okay, so I've got the uh, key on, Maxi AP dongle plugged in. And I'm going to go into the chassis control module and read trouble codes now that I've got that connector unplugged. It doesn't look bad. I'm going to clear the codes. See if it clears. I heard the dinging on the dash. It sounds, sounds like it may have reset. So let's go back and read trouble codes again. So, obviously it's not in that connector. I'm going to blow it out and reconnect it, but I think there could be a short to ground on the, on the trailer brake control wire. Damn. Okay. Okay, so to now, now that we have a fault code, C1114-00, we can do a search for that. There are two TSBs. I tried to clear the code. It would not clear. Let's see what this TSB suggests. Uh, trying to clear history DTCs from the chassis control module. It may be known as they will not clear. To correct this problem, reprogram the chassis control module K38 with the latest calibration. Well, that's interesting. That's possibly what I have to do but it seems that the problem is still present and then this TSB says check trailer wiring or check trailer brake so we experience intermittent check trailer wiring message and uh, service on vehicles equipped can affect a truck with aftermarket trailer brake uh, concerns me each time the trailer is running laps. See, the trailer isn't even plugged in, so it's got nothing to do with poor ground on the trailer or problems with the trailer. It's not even plugged in. So let's go back to the actual diagnostic chart for for this trouble code and have a look at it. System based diagnostic procedure provides an overview. Trailer auxiliary supply voltage short to ground. That's what we have. Auxiliary supply voltage short to ground. That's not trailer brake control. Hmm, that's weird. Trailer auxiliary supply voltage short to ground. C1114. Well, let's see what the troubleshooting is. Trailer brake power control module detects a short 
to ground or open or short the voltage on the trailer auxiliary supply voltage circuit. Action taken. Trailer brake control will be disabled for the remainder. The driver information will say service trailer brake system. It actually says check or service or uh, check trailer wiring. Clears this even if you're not detected before the conducting the drive cycles. Well, it's coming back up as soon as you start the vehicle. Hmm. I'm going to read this through and try and condense it. Well, I think the key here to this diagnostic is the explanation here that C111400, the trailer brake power control module, detects a short to ground open or a short to voltage on the trailer auxiliary supply voltage circuit. Isn't that special? Now reading the troubleshooting chart, they don't have an actual troubleshooting chart for this particular code far as I can see. They give they go into this circuit testing which basically checks every wire, powers and grounds and does nothing more than increase the billable hours. Hmm. I've already checked powers and grounds to these modules yesterday when I was trying to figure out why it wouldn't communicate. Turned out to be a scan tool problem. Hmm. Well, we'll have some more reading here. So here's the schematic we were looking at yesterday, testing all those fuses and stuff. And here's the trailer brake control module, and it shows the one wire leaving that going to the trailer connector X. Oh, damn. I don't know why I clicked that one. It doesn't blow it up. Going to X88 trailer connector, but it doesn't show all the other wires. I don't get it. That doesn't make sense. How does this module monitor the auxiliary feed wire? if it doesn't actually go through that module. Hmm, let's find this X88 connector and have a look at that. So here's the connector on the back of the trailer brake 7 pole plug. And positive battery, positive voltage should be on pin E, which is the red and light green wire. I think it would be wise to check that immediately and find out if we actually have power there. So I've taken the back off this connector. It looks pristine. So this big red wire with the green tracer is supposed to have power. I've got a test light connected to a pair of ice grips clamped onto the trailer hitch. And that's the red wire. And I have no power there. I turned the tail lights on and that's the tail light feed right there, so I know I have a good ground on my test light. So there should be power on that red wire. Let's find out where that comes from. So here's the electrical circuit from pin E at the trailer plug, red, dark, red green trace, circuit 742, and it shows it comes from a fuse under the hood. That's not one of the fuse we checked the other day because that wasn't in the circuit diagram. That just strictly supplies power to that. But I don't understand how the trailer brake control module monitors that circuit when it doesn't even go through there. Well, for what it's worth, let's check that 30 amp fuse. So that fuse was burnt. I've replaced it with a, another fuse from the fuse panel because it's a special 30 amp J fuse. And now I have power there. So I'm going to put this all back together again and see if that code will clear. So this is that new mini J fuse, fuse number two here. This is the 30 amp fuse for the trailer brake control. But this is the 30 amp fuse for the auxiliary power. And as I said, I don't know how it monitors it unless this junction box monitors it and then it's networked to the trailer brake controller because that wire goes straightly from straight from this fuse straight directly to that plug and it and it uh, it's open 
So I'm going to uh, temporarily put a 30 amp circuit breaker in here because I don't have this particular fuse. Even the parts department's having a tough time. So I'm going to uh, just wire up a couple jumper wires here and put this 30 amp circuit breaker in just to make sure the code's going to clear when the fuse is replaced. Okay, so I'm going to try reading the trouble codes again from this thing. Now I did pull the 30 amp fuse out of the trailer brake control. I don't like the description here. Trailer brake control solenoid valve control circuit and then the lost communication. That's because I pulled the fuse out. I stole that 30 amp fuse. So we're going to clear DTCs. And that one goes away, but the C114, and there's the dinging, and there's the message. So, yes, that fuse was blown, but that didn't fix the problem. Damn it. Oh, oh well, I'm going to see if I can find out some more information. So I'm confused here. C1114-00, trailer brake control solenoid circuit malfunction. But then when you go down to the fault information, it has it in here, trailer auxiliary supply voltage. That's why I started checking that 30 amp fuse. Hmm. And here it says C1114-00, the trailer brake power control module detects a short the ground, open or short the voltage on the trailer auxiliary supply voltage circuit. Well, we definitely had an open, the fuse was blown. But we've changed that fuse, and now we have power to that pin, but we still have this fault code, and it won't clear. The other code that I generated by pulling out the 30 amp fuse, the other 30, to borrow it temporarily, it cleared, and every so many seconds this vehicle will ding, 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 check trailer wiring. And there's no trailer plugged in, obviously. Hmm. So I did most of this testing yesterday when we were qualifying powers and grounds. It says here to check for these codes, but I don't have them. It says if none of these go to ignition off, all vehicle systems off, disconnect the harness connector of the trailer brake control power module. That's the small module. Test for less than 10 ohms between pin 9 and ground. Well, the ground was good. I tested it yesterday. So if it's less than 10, Verify a test lamp lights on the B plus terminal one and the test light did. So that goes down to here. Ignition off, test for eight and a half, ten and a half volts between the signal circuit terminals two and ground. Now I did not do that yesterday. Terminals two and ground. So that's a wire between. So we're looking at a power supply between the trailer brake control module well, how could you have that? Hmm. Well, let's continue. And test for infinite resistance, test the signal, test for two ohms. Hmm. So basically, you're supposed to have between eight and a half and 10 and a half volts on pin number two coming from the chassis control module. It looks like it's a duty cycled signal of some kind. So that's the normal response, eight and a half to 10 and a half volts. That's an average. And then if that's good, check terminal five for the basically the same thing. And if that's good, it wants you to check for power at the trailer connect a test lamp to the trailer auxiliary supply voltage wire in the trailer brake wiring harness. That sh that's a typo. That should say to the trailer brake wire, not the auxiliary supply wire. And verify the test lamp turns on and off when moving the manual trailer brake lever to the uh, minimum and maximum. So we're going to try that and see if that works. So now I feel embarrassed. I'm going to open this plug here and have a look in here again. And you'll notice the bottom 
terminal right here, which would be the electric trailer brake terminal, is actually broken off. I don't know how I didn't see that when I looked in there the other day. Oh boy. So it obviously needs this plug. Now is that the cause of the problem or did that short against another wire when they plugged in a trailer connector and damage something? Maybe damage the trailer brake control module? We're going to change this connector and then go from there. So if you look carefully here at pin 2, which is this uh, circuit right here, going from the chassis control module to the trailer brake module, it looks like it's a duty cycle signal based on a command from the uh, control switch in the dash, which is down here. Well, to summarize things here with this fiasco, we know it needs a trailer plug, so I'm going to order up the trailer plug from the dealer. Replace that. At the same time, I'm going to, I'm going to get a trailer brake control module because it's very well possible that when the customer plugged in the trailer and that pin got bent to break off like that, it might have shorted to that 30 amp power supply and that could have caused it to, well, it obviously blew the 30 amp fuse under the hood but that could have taken out the trailer brake control power module. So my understanding is that module does not need to be flashed when it's installed. That's this module here, the trailer brake power module. Um, the chassis control module obviously does. So I'll have one of those on hand when the time comes to see if that uh, is required as well. So another technician is here today and he has access to GMSI. So it bugged me that this this information in here isn't quite right. This fault description for C1114 is correct. It says trailer brake solenoid control and this is in direct hit or identifix and then down here under the circuit this diagnostic fault it mentions trailer auxiliary supply voltage and further down here it says the trailer brake power control module detects a short to ground open or short to voltage on the trailer auxiliary supply voltage circuit. So here it is the document in GMSI. This is the same, but here it says now trailer auxiliary supply voltage, which is still not quite right, but it is say in brackets trailer brake output signal. Further down here, the trailer brake power control module detects a short to ground, open to short to voltage or plausibility failure on the trailer brake output circuit, not auxiliary circuit. So they've obviously fixed this and Identifix hasn't been able or hasn't updated or it was never passed on to, to them. That's the problem when the... <sighs> hmm. That's the problem when everything's online. The manufacturer could update the information but if they don't send a message to the aftermarket suppliers of information, we don't get it and we get misled.